right, we are here at my outdoor worm bin, and I am so excited because the last time we fed them, we fed them two huge hoagies, and we put a lot of food scraps around it. But between then and now, we also dug in here and gave about 2,000 worms to our neighbor because she just got a sub pod. So we'll see how they have done, and we'll just kind of go right in the center and check it out. And wow, look at that. Even with 2,000 worms missing from here, there's still a ton. And right there, right here, is a black soldier larvae. Let's see if there's any more in there. Now, with that hoagie feeding, there was a lot of bread, obviously. And what I did was I added some water in between. And then it's gotten really hot and the thunderstorms have started to come. So the rainwater has actually added some water. And this bin is really good at draining water. It's two fabric pots, one inside the other, the 20 gallon kind, and there's another black soldier fly larvae. And what that does is it kind of lets the water in, sheds it a little bit, but also lets it in and then lets it out. So right now these castings are just the perfect moisture. And wow, I mean, it really doesn't look like we took out 2000 worms from here. So I don't know, there's just a lot of worms. And I'm finding more and more black soldier fly larvae, which makes sense because I am seeing them around the garden and around my compost bin. So, you know, I'm not seeing a whole lot of food. I mean, there's definitely some individual food scraps. Here's a uh, avocado pit, and I'll just kind of break it open a little bit. And again, a couple more black soldier larvae. Now, some people say to be careful with the black soldier larvae, not because they're harmful, they're actually really good at composting food, but because they reproduce like crazy. In fact, you don't really see the, the flies flying around, they just kind of hang out, they're mimic flies, and they look like black wasp, but these can overwhelm a bin if you have a lot of food, and they can outcompete the worms. But for now, this looks like about what we had last year, last summer, and no problem at all. So let me go ahead and dig around and kind of aerate this out. Oh, wait, before I do that, check it out. Just tons of worms. This is fantastic. Wow, they are really down low, probably because it's cooler, a little bit cooler down there. And here's one of the corn cobs. It is, oh, right in the middle. They like to hollow out there. But it is real mushy. That's what I was about to say. And this looks like another avocado pit. But so the corn kernels are completely gone and now it's just the cob. And that was, I think we put that in probably somewhere around 25 days ago or so. And it has actually been 15 days since we fed that hoagie feeding and 12 days since we pulled out those 2,000 worms. So whatever is left, 3,000 to 4,000 has done a number on all the food that we had in here. Yeah, check it out. Look at this avocado. Just tons of worms and a couple of black soldier fly larvae. Another one of those corn cobs. <laughs> More corn cabbage. Here is that kombucha scoby. It is just thin as paper, so we're not going to see this in here for too much longer. And inside I had another corn cob and I broke it open and check it out. Worms just hanging out in there. So I guess they like the little tubes of castings they've made in there. Probably making babies in private there. All right, we're just going to make a little area here to put in our feeding. And I am pretty excited. Boop, we had a jumper, so we're going to jump back in. I am pretty excited because we've got some extra special experimental food here. So what we had in mind was some Nestle hot chocolate complete with some tiny marshmallows. So this is going to go on top of our feeding. And I've actually saved some worms from when we got some castings out earlier before this video. And we're going to throw a time lapse on top of that. So let's go ahead and start building the feeding. All right, so in goes a bunch of bedding. And when we were in here last gathering those 2000 worms for the sub pod, I did notice a little bit of heat. So when you're filling up your feeding zone, just kind of check on it after a couple days. If you're feeding as much as I am, if you have like 4,000 worms like I do, check on it and make sure it's not generating too much heat here in the summer. So for the regular food scrap feeding, we've got some banana peels, we've got some strawberries and apples, but we also have some pineapples. So it'll be interesting to see how they do with this. And I have a feeling that we're going to be seeing this for the next uh, couple weeks, maybe up to a month or so. So let's go ahead and dump the rest of this out. And that is actually a little bit more pineapple than I thought. So I'm just going to kind of add in some 
of the castings here. And this was frozen, but it's now completely thawed out, so the worms will have no trouble just kind of finding their way around from it. I'll add some more bedding as well to help that out. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll add some of this pulverized oats, and they're just some oats that I found in the pantry that are way expired, about four years expired, and I pulverized them, and man, do the worms really go for them. I put this on top of my feedings and on top of the bedding in my other bins, and the worms take care of it in like two or three days. Next, we'll add a little bit of coffee, and it's just another food source for them that I like to use my used coffee grounds and used tea grounds for them. And then for grit, I use pulverized eggshells and I just blend them up in a little magic bullet blender that I have. And I use the container just exclusively for eggshells because they can cause the container to go cloudy as the little micro scratches they get. But it's important to put grit into your worm bin so that the worms can use it in their gizzards to grind their food and then it's good for your garden too. All right, so now for the moment I've been waiting for, worms are gonna get hot chocolate. And this is actually looking pretty yummy as I <laughs> look at this. Now, these are individual packs, but I think we've had these for years and years. Our kids are a little bit more grown up and they don't eat like hot chocolate as much, but we're just gonna give them a lot. In fact, I did not realize I had this much. So let me kind of put it on the edges and it smells wonderful. I wonder how it's gonna smell in about a week when we check back in here. And then to top it off, in go the marshmallows. Now this should be real fun. The reason I put all this stuff on top is because I wanna see if the marshmallows get totally eaten when we come back in here. So I didn't want it to be too disturbed, so I kept it right on top. All right, so let's just kind of gently cover this up with the remaining bedding we have. And I've got some other shredded cardboard I can use on top if we need it too. But we're gonna build this up and then we're gonna release the worms that I got from harvesting right on top of here. And I think there's probably somewhere around two to 300 in that container that we have. So if you've enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I've got a couple other videos. If you're interested in my channel, I've got a worm tower, a vermi hut, and I also have a tiny worm bin, which has all kinds of different things you need to think about if you're going for a kind of a smaller worm bin. But let's go ahead and get those worms set up here and let them dive down into what looks like a really yummy feeding. So here we go. Inside here is about two to 300 worms, I think. So let's begin. Looks like they're just about all in. I'm just gonna add some paper on top, some cardboard and shredded newspaper. But I also wanted to show you how I close up this bin. This bin is made of two 20 gallon fabric pots. And all I do is kind of lift them up. This is the inner one. I fold it in like this. And then I take the outer one and I basically do the same thing. Just like that. And there you go. I just put a basin on top of this and that helps to shade it. But this also kind of seals it in from any kind of critters that are trying to get in here. And I'm in Florida and I've been running this thing for two summers and I've had only one little issue and they didn't steal any worms. So hope everybody's having a great day and happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.